Hi. Hi, this is Kelly. I'm the clinic nurse with the MDA ALS Center of Hope at Temple. I hope this is working correctly. <laughs> I'll probably hear that on every live video you're going to be seeing. Um, if anyone wants to text and tell me that it's going okay, that'll be great. Um, I'm here today from my lovely uh, mirrored, so this <laughs> lovely uh, home today. And I just wanted to give everyone an update. Oh, hi. Thank you, Sarah. Um, it's a little strange when you don't have feedback. Um, so I am here to chat about um, the elephant in the room of uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Um, there have obviously been uh, many questions and concerns um, from our pals and um, families reaching out. They um, just, you know, are looking for some feedback on, you know, what the best recommendations would be. Um, and it's understandable because uh, it's a bit of a scary time. And uh, we want to make sure we're doing the safest things possible um, as much as that is in our control. So uh, just a little kind of update for anyone who is on that isn't part of our clinic. Um, I'm the clinic nurse coordinator for the ALS clinic at Temple uh, University in Philadelphia, because this is Facebook, so anyone could be on here from everywhere. Um, and uh, Dr. Hyman Patterson, Terry Hyman Patterson had done a, a Facebook Live last week, kind of updating on the clinic. Um, and we've had to uh, go virtual, if you will. Um, we don't want to lose our contact with our pals and our families. Uh, so we're doing our best to stay in touch through tele telemedicine visits. Um, we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, lots of Zoom. Um, but it's great because um, it's so helpful to see everyone um, as much as we can versus uh, just talking on the phone. So uh, we can do a bit of an evaluation as well. And um, thank you for cheering me on, guys. So, uh, Again, just wanted to uh, give an update on uh, the coronavirus. Um, lots of names for it. Also, COVID-19, um, and then it's SARS-CoV-2. -co um, so we hear pretty much everywhere in the news right now. Um, and uh, you've, I'm sure, have to modify your lives as well. Um, a lot of folks are working from home or unfortunately not working right now. Um, and leaving your house becomes a little bit of a scary situation, um, as well as thinking of who's the best to invite into the house. So um, we'll just go through, uh, we'll start a little bit about the virus. Um, it is um, a virus that uh, is similar um, to when you're infected with the flu. Uh, you show um, symptoms um, or any kind of virus, you show symptoms after an incubation period. So uh, with this specific virus, the coronavirus can be up to 14 days of not showing symptoms and some folks don't show symptoms at all. So this is the reason that we're really pushing um, for everyone to be safe and uh, distancing as much as possible. Um, you can have the virus and not show any symptoms and that could therefore infect someone else um, either um, from droplets in the air um, um, or also things that you have touched because they do stay on things like plastics and uh, cardboard for quite a bit of time. So um, again, we want everyone to be mindful of the symptoms. Um, it's really tough when you start talking about respiratory symptoms um, and we are, uh, you know, talking about neuromuscular diseases where there can be a weakening of the respiratory system. Um, it becomes a little bit uh, frightening. Um, and it also, you can have the symptoms like weakness, fatigue, um, and shortness of breath at baseline. So what we're really looking for are changes in your status, so changes at your baseline. Um, you know, I'm talking um, specifically regarding PALS right now, but this is really for anyone, um, anyone in your family, any friends, coworkers. If you start to see these symptoms, um, really pay attention to them. So we want to look for fever, a change in your breathing. It could be a shortness of breath. Um, there has been shown some congestion. Um, one of the qualifiers for the cough you hear a lot is a dry cough. Um, so it's a little bit different than, you know, when you're getting like that head cold or that chest congestion. But again, pay attention to all of these symptoms. Um, if you start to um, spike a fever, if you start to show um, 
any of these symptoms, shortness of breath, even a little bit of a sore throat, things like that. I know that they're general um, and that it can be a little bit confusing. So the best thing that you wanna do, if these symptoms turn more than mild, if these symptoms are pervasive, you wanna give your primary care physician a call. So the doctor that's closest to monitoring you, usually your primary care physician, um, you wanna give them a call and see if they recommend either if you um, should be tested um, or if you should self-quarantine, meaning stay in your home. Um, we become, especially, my mom is there. Hi, everyone, thank you for your hellos. Um, I'm doing my best to give you the information that I have and to also look at the chat, so just bear with me. Um, I also at home with two really adorable and large puppies who are sleeping right now, and um, I have treats to throw at them if they start to bark, so just bear with me. Um, so um, when we start to uh, talk about how can we how can we avoid uh, being infected, how can we uh, reduce our chances, the biggest thing, honestly, is social distancing. So I'm sure everyone's been doing that. Um, we want to continue that. It really is the best way. So if um, you do not have to leave your house, don't go. Um, try to just stay home. If you can work from home, if you can keep in touch with loved ones, um, like we're doing through um, some kind of video chat or phone calls, that really is the best thing. Um, because the infection rate is is high, and because it um, the incubate, incubation period is long, um, you could it, you know have contact with a lot of folks in a short amount of time, um, and that just gets compounded day to day. So the most the better you can stay home, the longer you can. That's great. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything, so I'm going to my notes as well. Um, if uh, you do have to go out, um, we all need things. We need things from the pharmacy. We need things from the grocery store. Um, it's inevitable. You're going to have to leave your house most likely. Um, during those times, I actually personally found um, it can be a little bit scary. <laughs> so um, going to work, um, I know as a nurse, I'm going in and I'm going to put on gloves and I'm going to put on a mask and all of these things. Um, when I went to the grocery store, I thought, oh my goodness, this is all on me. I have to make sure I have my mask and I have to make sure I'm using my hand sanitizer and, you know, um, those precautions aren't necessarily in place all around you. So you really have to be mindful of what you're doing um, yourself. So um, if we're talking about distancing, um, uh, six feet or more is the, really the best. Um, and that comes from the droplets and how the droplets can um, infect you. So I'm talking about droplets and I'm using nursing terms. Sometimes I have to stop. So we're talking about a cough, a sneeze, things that get into the air. So if you have to cough and you're outdoors, outside of your home, um, even in your house, because you want to think about your family members, but especially if you're out in the public, if you have tissues with you, best thing, grab your tissue, sneeze or cough into your tissue, throw that tissue away immediately and hand sanitize. Um, so keeping that sanitizer with you is key. Um, if you don't have anything with you, you don't happen to have a tissue, please use your um, elbow. Go into your elbow, not into your hands because then we're gonna be touching things. Um, so distancing, actual physical distancing, we're talking six feet or more if you can. Um, things like going to the grocery store, going to the pharmacy, um, there are really not many other <laughs> reasons. Hopefully you have to leave your house um, to go out. I mean, unless it's work or things like that. But if it's just someone who's um, from home most of the time, if you don't have to go out, try to just stay home. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different masks because I know that masks come up. What's the best thing to wear? Um, and again, you can throw up questions in the meantime and I'll do what I can to get to them. So feel free. Um, I do not have a paper or surgical mask with me. Those are super duper one-time uses. Um, you've most likely seen them if you're going into a doctor's appointment or um, a procedure. It's uh, just a mask that fits over your ears. It looks very similar to this homemade one uh, that I have. So I actually went to the grocery store the other day um, I took a, a lot of deep breaths and tried to stay as calm as possible and social distance myself as best I could. I had my hand sanitizer with me and this is the mask I used. And I have to give a shout out if you can see it. Oh, which way am I going? Okay. I had to get a shout out to one of my former coworkers from Drexel, Bessie. She actually hand sewed these and um, they're really adorable. She knows I have dogs at home and it says I woof you. And I might be upside down. I'm backwards in this. 
and then it's reversible. So if anyone who doesn't love dogs, you can use this. But she made um, a mask and this is similar, I'll come back. This is similar to a surgical mask that you might have, very basic construction. Uh, there are patterns online that you can find. Um, if anyone's handy and can sew, these are great. Um, so these would just go on over your nose, over your mouth, behind your ears. So um, this is great to have. If you're going to go out, in fact, if you're leaving your house at all, um, I wear it when I walk the dogs. I'm taking the, well, I don't take the trash out. My husband does, but uh, the trash out. Um, if you are going to be in contact with anyone, um, even at that six feet distance, take your mask with you all the time now. Um, these again are great. They're cloth, they're reusable, except one time, one outing. So you take them, you toss it in the wash and then use it again. Um, once you touch it, you have to think about um, everything that's on the outside has been touching the air and you've been exposed. So if you touch this mask and you're tossing it in the laundry, wash, wash, wash your hands. It's really the best thing. Um, so we're talking about hygiene. Um, I dropped my hand sanitizer, which was my aid. Sorry guys. Okay, so I keep a hand sanitizer with me at all times. Thank you to Sarah Feldman, our awesome PT. Um, it, this one is sunshine and lemon, so everyone says it smells delicious when I uh, use it. Um, I keep these everywhere. They wanna be over 60% alcohol to be um, what you need to uh, get rid of the virus and to sanitize your hands. So um, I keep them in my car, in my pocket, in my purse, in my book bag. I keep one everywhere these days. Um, if you can wash your hands, soap and water, wash, 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 20 seconds, sing a song. Um, that's great. And if you are out in the world um, or not near a sink to wash your hands, have your hand sanitizer with you. So we'll review again. <laughs> the mask, it's on. Once you touch it, Laundry, hand sanitizer. Okay, so then the all important mask, um, really to protect our healthcare workers who are um, working with this virus, um, either suspected cases um, or actually uh, working with folks that are testing positive. Um, this really is the best mask. So this is the N95. It usually will have the instructions there or the uh, indication that it's an N95. Um, my friends actually found this, uh, they had previously been um, painting and renovating their house. So this is, you see the construction workers, painters, um, landscapers, a lot of other folks than healthcare workers have them. And they've actually been awesome and have been donating them to the healthcare workers. Um, so this mask is, is really great at protecting you from the virus. Um, they are harder to come by they really should be used in that healthcare setting because that's where they're needed right now. Um, if you do have one, um, these can last a little bit longer. There isn't a good way for us to sanitize these at home. So this one actually hasn't been uh, used yet. I'm using it more for a uh, visual aid at this time. Um, um, if it becomes soiled, if it becomes wet, you wanna get rid of it. Um, it can be compromised. So you don't want to, you don't wanna sanitize this um, it could break down the effectiveness of it. So I just wanted to show the different type of mask. I know a lot of folks, you know, you hear it a lot. Um, so the surgical mask is a paper mask, um, cloth mask that everyone is wearing. This is great for everyone going out and about. Um, if you just, you know, you start with a tickle or a cough, um, even in your house, uh, if you have other folks, you want to protect your cough from getting out into the air. These are great washable. Um, I wanted to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything there. Um, the biggest thing um, with hand sanitizing, again, 60% or more alcohol in your hand sanitizer. And if you can wash your hands, that's the best thing. Honestly, soap, water, 20 seconds at a time. Okay, can't say the hand sanitizing enough. Um, okay, so now that we're at home more, um, we have a lot of... Um, adjustments that we're making. So um, we're working from home now, we're just living at home more, maybe we don't wanna to go to the grocery store as much or um, you wanna support your local businesses. So um, that's been a big thing in our community. Um, you know, I really, uh, I love being involved in the community and I really hope the small businesses are, are able to uh, to keep going. Um, so when I see that they are, um, you know, having maybe alternate takeout options, curbside pickups, things like that, that's great. Um, but again, we don't 
want to forget all of the safety things. So um, a lot of questions about takeout, a lot of questions about the grocery store, bringing things into your home and what's the safest way to do that. So uh, we have a couple, um, our doctors, I have to say, when I'm going back to my notes, these are actually um, Dr. Hyman Patterson, uh, Dr. Anahita Dabu, and Dr. Justin Kwan really came together um, to go over these recommendations and uh, to really make it as thorough as possible. Um, so I want to make sure I'm incorporating everything that, um, that they were recommending as well. Um, so if we're talking about things that we're bringing into the home, if it's possible uh, to, to sanitize them at all, go for it. Um, um, if you're bringing in groceries, um, something that can be washable, you can take it right to the sink, wash it. I know my reusable grocery bags, um, I am taking out the groceries and then I'm I'm Cloroxing them um, and letting them dry um, and sanitizing them as best as I can. Um, the same thing with um, takeout, like if you have takeout boxes, cardboard, those are really tough because you can't sanitize them. So if you can bring your food in and, you know, safely take your food out and maybe put it on your plate from home and then get rid of those get rid of those boxes as much as you can, uh, washing down your uh, kitchen counters, uh, things like that as much as possible is great. Uh, the other thing with delivery, if we're not picking up curbside, uh, there are options almost every um take out delivery right now um, if you're using a service like grubhub uh, postmates caviar things like that they have the option where you can say i want a contact free delivery um, so that's nice um, they usually text or call and then you can say you know leave it wherever if you have a table out there or on your step um, and then again i use those precautions where i remove everything from those outer containers um, and then get rid of it get rid of the cardboard what have you uh, the packaging so um, the other, a couple other options um, is, uh, you know, your food you can't uh, put out to sit, but your mail, if it's not anything urgent that you have to open up and look at and touch right away, um, if you can take your mail and put it in a separate bag, I actually have mine in a separate bag and it's off um, away from our living space. Um, you could even put it in the garage as well. Um, just another option to kind of give that time if there is a virus or something contaminated on it, um, give that time uh, to, to kind of die off if you will. Um, and I want to make sure I didn't miss anything there. Um, if you have questions along the way, let me know as well. Uh, glad to do that. So um, another big topic as far as, um, you know, from a medical standpoint comes uh, with having treatment. So either if someone's coming into your home, um, if you have a home care home um, PTOT, home infusions. Uh, there's lots of reasons that folks might be coming into your house on a regular basis where we wouldn't think anything of it. Oh, they use hand sanitizer or wash their hands. Great. Um, but now we're a little bit more leery, which, which is understandable. So a lot of questions have come in um, regarding if staff should be coming into your house. Um, it's a little bit of a gray area because um, we don't want anyone to miss out on their services or to get behind or to feel like they don't have the support that they need. Um, so you definitely want to use best judgment on that one. Um, one of the things that I know we've been doing at our clinic, um, we've been in touch with our DME companies, our home care companies. Um, they've actually been great in reaching out to us, um, you know, without prompting as well, um, just to say, is there going to be an interruption to service? Is there going to be an interruption to supplies? Are you vetting your, um, you know, therapists that are coming out of your uh, staff that are going out. Um, and, and, you know, it's been a resounding, we're doing everything we can to be as safe as possible. Um, so they're trying not to limit services if they can help it because obviously respiratory companies, you know, home care companies, these are all still very much essential personnel. So if, um, you know, you feel like you need those services. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea to even you yourself call the nurse or the the, the manager for the, um, you know, company that's coming out to your house, the home agency, and just ask them what their policies are. Um, I know many are taking temperatures multiple times a day. Um, I know that at Temple, we have to actually log in every single day. 
um, our symptoms. So even if you have no symptoms, just so they're tracking it, we have to take our temperature. We have to say, um, you know, if we have a known exposure to anyone, if we're working offsite, if we're working from home, if we have someone living in our house um, that's either been tested, that they work outside of the home. Um, so there are lots of ways to vet kind of uh, the folks coming into your house and absolutely ask the question as well. I mean, we want everyone to feel comfortable. Um, so on the whole, we've found that most of the agencies are, you know, being very safe and very careful. But again, this is absolutely your comfort level as well. So if you feel, um, especially if it's related to a treatment that you don't think you should be um, pursuing because you either have to leave your house or someone has to come into your house, absolutely have that conversation with your doctor um, just to you know, make sure everyone's on the same page and um, if there are any other recommendations um, that they would have for the time being. Um, so in all of this, when in doubt, wash your hands <laughs> and call your doctor's office. I feel like those are my two takeaways here so far. Um, all good things. Um, we're glad to take your calls too. <laughs> um, the um, other questions I had um, as well were from uh, diagnostic testing. So labs, um, MRIs, things like this. Um, all non-essential or non-urgent um, scans, labs, things like that are, are recommended to be on hold. Um, again, defer to your doctor on this if they have, you know, something that you absolutely need to, to check out, like a certain lab level, things like that. Um, but otherwise, um, if it's something that can hold off for a little bit, it would be better not to, again, take that chance to expose yourself. And um, most importantly, pay attention to your symptoms. You know, if you start to feel ill, um, you know, I feel like we know our bodies the best. So if we notice that something's a little bit, um, you know, out of range for what we're used to, um, you know, don't let it go too long. If something becomes nagging, if something becomes, you know, the symptoms are more than just mild symptoms, you know, definitely make that call to your doctor because, um, you know, again, this virus is uh, pervasive, unfortunately, and um, there can be that lag time, that incubation time. So we want to make sure that we're jumping on it as soon as possible, um, limiting your exposure and um, being as safe as you can with uh, hand hygiene, not touching your face, which is really hard for me. If I did that any time during this, I didn't notice it. I'm always adjusting my glasses, so <laughs> please don't hold it against me. I made sure my hands were clean before this uh, Facebook Live. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to um, pop them on here. Um, once this session closes, you can absolutely make comments, leave questions. I know not everyone was available at two o'clock today and that's okay. Um, we will get back to your questions. Um, we'll be checking in. And um, I wanted to give some resources. So if you log on to the ALS Hope Foundation website, um, or if you're going from Facebook, you can get right to our website from there. Um, go ahead and click and the main page, home page, has um, most of what I talked about, um, if not more. And um, it tells you about COVID, again, the precautions, um, and then there are links, uh, which are great. So um, I always say defer to the doctors and the scientists during a time um, of pandemic crisis <laughs> that we're in. Um, these are the folks like on the front lines. They're the ones um, that have the most updated information. So we have the link to the CDC, the link to the WHO. Um, we also have, of course, you're, you would be on the ALSO Foundation. Um, we have the other um, ALS organizations, MDA. Um, please feel free to uh, not only send us questions, ask us questions. We're glad to help um, either answer them or guide you. Um, and for the most updated information, you definitely want to check out the CDC and the WHO uh, for any uh, recommendations. Because again, this is a Facebook world. Um, so you folks may be um, tuning in from other states, which I know on the state level, it varies um, um, from place to place. So um, please do check out that. Um, Yes, and um, Mr. Busby, I agree. Um, it's a it's a bit of a scary time, um, and uh, if you um, check on our. Uh, 
our, our website and uh, keep up with our Facebook. We are um, holding some support groups that you can feel free to reach out. Um, you know, I, I know my anxiety level <laughs> definitely jumps up a little bit. Um, and, you know, even though I feel like I've been set up pretty well with, with the tools and the knowledge, um, it doesn't make it any less scary. So don't, um, please don't ever hesitate to call us. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, we are absolutely glad, like I said, to, to help out with that. Um, Yes, thank you, Jamie. So uh, in addition to, I'll just touch on this a little bit. Um, it's a little hard to talk about, but um, I, uh, of course, um, am, am, am here full time um, with our ALS MDA team, and um, we are doing everything we can to still be in touch and to uh, be accessible to everyone. Um, a little bit varied. We uh, definitely miss seeing everyone in person. I know Dr. Patterson touched on this, but it's it's hard for me not to talk about because uh, I'm the hugger in the clinic. Um, I'm the I just thrive on uh, seeing everyone and uh, checking in, and um, we definitely miss everyone at clinic, and and I'm. Sure, whoever's tuned in, this goes for, for uh, every clinic, every doctor's office. Um, you know, we, we really, um, this is why we do this, you know, our pals and our family. So uh, we definitely miss seeing everyone in person. Um, we are glad to supplement that with uh, Facebook Lives, with um, Zoom meetings, support groups, um, and then we're doing telemedicine calls uh, for our folks. And I, I hope that there's telemedicine available to everyone um, who needs it. And um, if you're not sure, ask the question for your, for your doctor doctors and your, um, your clinics. Um, so we are um, uh, the nurses in neurology here at Temple, um, <clears throat> along with the other staff have been tasked with, um, you know, really helping out as much as we can. So we get a little bit pulled uh, from our regular duties. So again, be patient with us. Um, but one of the things, uh, I'm one of the nurses that is doing this. Um, there are a couple other nurses in neurology, our awesome research team. Um, we're actually um, at mobile units or, you know, right on campus. Um, we're actually swabbing for the uh, coronavirus. So um, if there's been a known exposure or suspected exposure, um, a lot of folks are employees, which is which is tough. Um, and um, and yeah, it's a little hard to talk about, but I'm glad to help out. I'm glad to uh, to, to, to to be able to do this. Um, this is why I became a nurse, right? I, I want to help. I want to be there. Um, I just always want to make sure everyone is safe and has the protection that they need. So you'll probably see a lot of my own personal posts go up about um, PPE equipment. Um, if you have ways to um, either get someone in touch that has the skills to make things um, or a company that can donate things, you know, obviously donations are awesome for um, PPE right now. Um, but I'm glad to do it and I'm glad to help out. Um, it's it's very front line more than I expected I would be a part of this. Um, but um, um, again, we are all there, whether it's screening at the front door of uh, anyone who has to come into the hospital, we're checking temperatures, everyone gets a mask, um, and that's that's non-nursing, uh, non-clinical helping out with that too. So I want to give a big shout out to the Temple team. Um, we uh, we have been at it for a little while now, and uh, I want to say that I, you know, I have some awesome coworkers, and um, you know, I know it's an all hands on deck effort for everywhere, and um, you know, any of the uh, first responders or, you know, frontline personnel for our doctors and nurses, um, they really, um, they really love what they do and they're glad to do it. And we want to make sure they have what they need. So, um, hi, Mrs. Fox. Good to see you, Mary Ellen. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, the question is, is it necessary to isolate from kids and grandkids? We are deferring to the role of if you don't live with them, that you shouldn't be visiting. Um, it's a hard thing to say, and I'm sure it's a hard thing to accept. Um, and it's uh, it's been really pulling at the heartstrings to see the all the videos and the the um, pictures of folks that are doing drive-bys or saying hi from the window. Um, yeah, it, unfortunately, I, I hate to say that, but yeah, it really is the safest thing to um, you know, keep the distance for now. It's not going to be forever. Um, and I'm just, I'm really holding on to that myself <laughs> because I miss everyone. So um, yes, you wanna distance as much as you can. And, and that really means not having um, the kids over and not having the grandkids over um, in person. If, if you can be distanced, um, and say hello, that's that's good. Um, but really having them over to the house is just a, a risk that um, it goes both ways, right? You know, um, 
anyone who could have possibly been exposed by by multiple things, um, multiple, you know, going to the store or touching something and, and may not know about it. Um, you know, for the kids and then anybody who is respiratory or immunocompromised. Um, so we're really like talking to the at the pals on that one and the families, um, you know, really be safe and try to uh, distance as much as you can. Please stay in touch and, um, you know, do those um, virtual Facebook, FaceTime, all of those things are great. Um, but it's really hard to uh, stay away, I know. So I'm sorry, Mrs. Fox, if that wasn't the answer you wanted, but it is the recommendation. So I have been talking for a long time. Um, I'm glad to keep going, but I also don't want to hold everyone up. So um, great information on the homepage of the ALS Hope Foundation. Again, there are links to some other resources. Feel free if you're watching this at a later time or you didn't get to ask a question yet, please pop it into the uh, comments section. Uh, we will definitely be getting back to those and um, we hope everyone stays in touch. We plan as a team to continue to be in touch uh, with everyone as well and um, please be safe, wash your hands, socially distance, wear your doggy masks, and um, I wish everyone well. We'll be in touch soon. Take good care.